誰も覚えていないことは存在しないことになるのだろうか私には小さい頃の記憶がない私がいた島のこと住んでいた家のことそして父のことも私たちが神隠しにあった以前のことは何も思い出せない一緒に見つかった4人もあの時のことは覚えていないかすかに思い出せるのは一つの旋律島に行くと私に告げ戻ってないあの島へは近寄らないでルカお母さん知らない方がいいことがあるのでも私は確かめたいあの時何があったのかそして失った記憶の先に何があるのか Hey there everybody and welcome back to more Fatal Frame 4. So we find ourselves back on Rogotsu Island, but under the control of a new character, Ruka, who has come looking for her missing friends Masaki and Maruka, who you may recall from the first chapter. Now we don't have a clear idea as to where we need to go, but we might as well press forward. <laughs> and be greeted with a startling image in our minds. Now. As with most of the other Fatal Frame games, it's not always super clear where you need to go, but the game is usually nice enough to give you visual auditory hints to lead you in the correct direction. Now in this case, not only do we get that picture in our mind, but the lighting here on the staircase seems to draw our attention upwards. Also that looks familiar up there, but before we head all the way up the stairs, there is this bizarre lit lantern here. And this lantern is going to be our save point for the game. Now we can't just save wherever we want to, much like in the other Fatal Frame games, we have to find these specific markers hidden throughout the game, and we'll be able to save at our leisure, as long as we're not being attacked by a ghost. In addition, not only can you save here, but you can buy items, which is a new addition of Fatal Frame 4. And if we take a quick look, we can tell that we can buy 
pretty much every type of film and medicine or healing item in the game, but if you can't tell by the amount of points you need, they are pretty uh, exorbitant to say the least. So we're going to try to refrain from using the shop if at all possible. Yeah, as our light hits the gate, we see that there is something of interest on the on the door handle there. And as we investigate, we find that it is a note from our friend Maruka. Now she mentions this horrible dream she's been having, these horrible visions she's been having of Rogotsu Island along with Masaki. The thing is that she mentions that as they got to the island, Masaki started to act a bit weird. She started to act very cold and distant, and as we saw in the introduction, she... Korewa? More or less just disappeared. Also, this area up here may seem familiar. This is where this is leading to the nurse's office on the second floor where we had to get the key for the museum. But as of right now, this gate is locked, so I guess we're going to have to find another way around. I guess we should follow after Madoka. And if we take a look at the nearby sign, we see that it's leading to the museum where they found the camera in the introduction chapter. So the museum is pretty much the way it was before. Lots of dilapidated, distorted pictures of Aso. But we also see that there are a few new items of interest in here, such as this item in the bookcase here. It goes into the Islander Extinction. It seems Rogotsu Island had a number of mass deaths and there's not a known cause for it, just a number of people who, if that image on the newspaper is to be believed, ended up in much the same fashion as the group of friends that uh, Maroka, Masaki, and Ruko are a part of. Also, it's easy to miss, but there's a notebook here on the ground. is the same notebook that was found on the desk in the first chapter, more of Aso's notes. Here he goes into a bit of backstory regarding the island and how it's the island nearest the underworld, which is always a good sign, especially considering the other locations are from Fatal Frame prior games, have all been locations close to the underworld, but it also goes into the fact that the moon is very strongly considered in the ritual for the island, which is used to communicate with the other world, and also that shrine maidens are forced to wear masks during the ritual to get a stronger connection to this other world. We also find the Camera Obscura that Maruka found in the introduction chapter. I suppose there's no harm in going and picking it up. So we find another memo from Maruka. 
Now, there's not much we can garner from this, even outside of the fact that Marokov continues to feel this bizarre, suffocating feeling from being back on the island. It comes across as if she feels like someone is following her or watching her. I get that similar sensation as well. But we get an, a, sh a short tutorial on something that I explained in the first video, which is the filament, which is the indicator at the top of the screen regarding the location of ghostly apparitions. In this case, if the indicator is red, it means that it is an aggressive person or ghost, and if it's blue, it means it's friendly or plot specific. Also, the item filament, which I explained before, is that thing in the lower right hand corner that will glow brighter the closer and the the closer we are to looking at something of interest in this case the blue item filament is indicating this newspaper here that is from the island's newspaper celebrating the great doctor Asso's visit to the island It also just goes into the fact that the main hall is being specifically decorated for the doctor's visit, but we'll probably won't be seeing that for a while. Now, if we wanted to follow after a Madoka straight into this room, well, we can't right now. We don't have a key. But maybe a key isn't what we need in the situation. You might notice the weird distortion now on the door. And this is another returning aspect of Fatal Frame from the prior games, which is if we take a picture of certain things, it may reveal further clues to help us figure out what we need to do. case, as the film develops, we see what appears to be a row of masks. Now we don't know where the masks might be, and I guess it's going to be up to us to figure out where they are, because they are directly tied to unlocking this door and reaching Madoka. So let's go ahead and set out on that journey. first real ghost battle. You may recall this nurse from the second floor. She isn't too difficult, especially if you can manage to get a fatal frame or two. She mostly just lunges at you, but she does have a bit more health than that first ghost that we fought. Still, that is the cue that we will be dealing with more hostile ghosts, especially in this chapter, as opposed to that introduction chapter, where we only had to deal with the one. But it does kind of give Ruka the idea that maybe there is something more to what's going on on the island than her friend's mere paranoia. Also down here on the ground we have our first new real item of the game in the Fatal Frame series overall, and that is this blue crystal. Now, Fatal Frame 4 decides to take a bit of a change of pace in regards to how you level up the camera. In this game, instead of just using straight points from your combat with Ghost, instead you use these blue crystals. Now if we go to our camera menu, we can get a general idea of how much it costs to upgrade our individual stats. It's over on the far right hand column. 
And as you can tell, it's pretty expensive. And also, there are a few more categories than there were in previous games. And also, every time you level up, the cost of blue crystals for each stat increases. So, we are going to have to keep a very close eye on all these hidden away item stashes. Also, brand new doll. Yeah, the placement of these Hazuki dolls is going to become a bit more treacherous the more and more we continue on through the game, but I promise I will be getting all of them, so don't worry about that. But considering right now we still don't have a clear idea as to where to go, I guess we could head up to the second floor, maybe head to the nurse's office. But a lot of the doors that were previously locked in the first chapter are still locked now, and there are a few newly locked doors, so the game is still definitely trying to funnel us into a very particular direction. Still, there, there is the upstairs, so I guess we could try heading up there. Or we'll get our first Vanishing Ghost of the game. Now the Vanishing Ghosts are much like in the other Fatal Frame games. You only get a single chance to get them. And they usually are only on screen for a short amount of time. So you want to be very careful in trying to catch them. But as with the other Fatal Frame games, they're also kind of indicative as to places of interest or general directions as to where you need to go. So in this case, we don't want to head upstairs just yet. Instead, we want to see and follow that young boy ghost. Seems he has led us into a newly unlocked door. What appears to be a fairly large dining room slash kitchen area. Sadly, the menu is a bit too low res to see what's on the menu for tonight. But there is an important item here to pick up, and it's our first healing item. So we get a little visit from a vanishing ghost, which is why I didn't want to ruin that. But yeah, herbal medicines are a returning healing item from the previous Fatal Frame games. They will re they will replenish about 70% all total of our health. a quick snapshot of a another nurse, or it might be the same nurse. We'll be seeing a few different nurses throughout the game. But I wonder what was catching her attention so much. Why, it's a key. which leads us all the way back into that main lobby near the very large staircase. And in addition to that, we also find a guide board. Now, this guide board has a very important piece of information, which the game nicely marks off in red for us, which is the number 13. The number 13 is going to be our access code to get to that second floor or to get that second floor gateway open. But there are a few more items to pick up in this dining room area. Which is another note from Madoka.
Now this note is a little bit less wordy to the point of almost being a bit incoherent as Madoka seems to be losing her sense of self and she seems to think that something is getting closer and closer to getting her. Not exactly sure what that might be though. find our first power-up lens of the game. These serve pretty much the same function as in the other Fatal Frame games, in that these special lenses will give an additional power to our camera, but it's a, it's a power that comes at a certain cost, which I think is called soul orbs. I, it's pretty much the exact same me mechanism from, I think, Fatal Frame, well, all the Fatal Frame games, in that as we start to do damage to an enemy, it will start to increase our overall spirit power, and once we have enough, we can use our special lens, which in this case is the blast lens, which will do a small increase in damage to a single shot. Figured I would go ahead and equip that. We might get some use out of it. Also, you might notice that there's something waiting in the chimney. Another sneakily hidden Hazuki doll. <laughs> now, what seems to be the main centerpiece of the dining room area here is this film projector, and it serves pretty much the exact same purpose as the other film projectors we found in Fatal Frame, which is that it will p play film reels. But as of right now, we obviously do not have any, so it's it's only something to keep in mind in, in the future. So we find even more blue crystals. Something, something of note in regards to those blue crystal pickups. The number you get is completely randomized, so the game kind of can be a bit dickish in regards to power-ups, but hopefully, hopefully it'll be much nicer to us. So we see the return of another item from the previous Fatal Frame games. The Stone Mirror is pretty much a free life. Once we have reached zero life, the Stone Mirror will break and refill us back to whole. The problem is that we can only carry one at a time, so we kind of have to be careful with them. So, this looks like a very familiar place, but something seems different than the picture we had before. And that's because there's a mask missing on the wall. I wonder where it could be. So Well, that quickly explains that. Yeah, it appears that that young child ghost is deciding to be a bit mischievous, and yeah, we're going to have to chase after it to get back that mask and unlock the door leading to Madoka. But before we head on after him, there is one last item to pick up here in the dining room, back on this table here. And it's another herbal medicine. Now, Fatal Frame 4, there are not a whole lot of drops in-game in regards to both medicine and film. I think that's mostly due to the fact that they have the shop available, but it's really a good idea to pick up as many of the, the healing items on the ground as possible, because we really will not be getting enough points to spend on those shop items. So there's something hidden back here. That's another doll. <laughs> oh, 
Also, you want to be a bit careful when going the, down this particular hallway because there are a few things you could miss. Such as a vanishing ghost standing out in the garden. Also, a small note in this shoved in this box over here to the right. While it's not exactly necessary information to know, it's always good to get as much backstory as possible. Now, this goes into the fact that some of the islanders that were struck in that, that mysterious mass death didn't die instantly, and instead they died from shock compounded by physical frailty, which I think is more than likely what happened to Luca's friends and probably a similar fate that she's trying to escape. But with that, we find ourselves back in the main lobby. Nothing too new down here, I think. <laughs> but there is still that teasing boy leading us about. And I guess solidifying the fact that we definitely need to head upstairs. And that means that we're going to have to get that gate open. So hopefully... You did manage to pick up that key and that guideboard to give you some idea as to how to get up there. Now under the stairs here we find what appears to be a storage area where they happen to store, hidden away in boxes. Super creepy Hazuki dolls. <laughs> and in addition to hidden away dolls, they also have a hidden away memo on the floor. Now this just continues on with the mysterious circumstances of some of the people that have gone to Rogotsu Island and have either died or just completely disappear disappeared off the face of the map. There's not been any specific cause of death, but <laughs> needless to say, Rogotsu Island is probably not a vacation spot most people would want to go to. But our our real main point of interest is in this circuit box here, where we find our first real puzzle of the game. Now, this may not seem immediately obvious, but well, you see that double digit number on to the right hand side there, we need to get that to 13. And if we flip these switches up and down, we see that there are different numbers, and all you have to do is get all five of the numbers to equal 13. Just simple enough to do, honestly. that we have opened up access to the second floor but I think we're gonna hold off on that until next time hopefully you will join me as we continue on in Fatal Frame 4